Jillian Forrest. Today I'm going to be doing a video all about ball pythons and their care and just showing you my enclosure uh, for Voodoo here and how I've set that up and just kind of guiding you through what you need when getting a new ball python to make sure they have a proper uh, enclosure and habitat. I did want to start off by saying I'm by no means an expert. I'm not claiming to be an expert or a professional. This is just information I've gathered over the years from my personal research as well as caring for the animals myself and just talking to breeders. Everybody has different opinions about the best way to care for their snakes. Uh, some people prefer rock systems, keeping them in tubs. Some think it's better to keep them in tanks. So again, there's just a lot of different opinions when it comes to the care of these animals. This is just, again, what I've learned throughout the years and my personal opinion on the best way to care for them. Quick little bit of background, uh, ball pythons are native to Central and Western Africa. The females can reach lengths of up to three to five feet long, whereas males are a little smaller, about two to three feet long. Uh, they are heavier bodied snakes. Ball pythons can live up to 30 years, so that is a commitment you're gonna wanna consider before going out and buying one. There's a lot of people that think like, wow, snakes are cool, I want one. They don't think about what a commitment it is. I mean, 30 years is a really long time. So it's just something you want to consider before going out and buying one. As far as personality goes, ball pythons are a little more timid and shy than other snakes. Their name ball python comes from the fact that whenever they feel threatened, they tend to roll up into a little ball and hide their head. Whereas other snakes might strike or rattle their tail or musk, which is pretty much pooping on you. Uh, ball pythons just tend to roll up into a cute little ball and hide. If you've never held a snake or you're afraid of snakes, I'd recommend starting out by holding one of these. The chances of them biting you, as long as you're careful, are slim to none. I own three different types of snakes and I've never been bitten by any of my snakes, but that just, you know, is taking into account that you have to be careful, you know, wash your hands after handling rats, mice. Uh, whenever you go to pick them up, don't, you know, reach from the front, kind of reach around from the back and lift them up like that. Uh, just little things you can do to prevent any mistakes. They're not going to go out of their way to bite you, but it is a possibility. It's something you have to accept when owning snakes. There's always going to be a chance that you can get bit. As far as caging requirements go, I keep my ball python in a tank. Uh, if they're a little younger than a year, you're going to want to keep them in a 20-gallon tank with a bunch of leaves and fake plants or real plants, whatever you choose. Basically, give them a lot of security and a lot of places to hide. Like I said, ball pythons are a little more timid. Uh, they can get easily stressed out if they're in open spaces. So you're gonna wanna add a lot of foliage in there to just kind of give them pretty much hiding spots. Um, but yeah, like I said, juveniles, you're gonna wanna maybe do a 20 gallon tank. Uh, and then for adult, you wanna do maybe like a 40 gallon tank or even bigger than that. I keep mine in a 40 gallon tank at the moment. I mean, eventually I might wanna upgrade that. You're gonna to wanna to have a minimum of two hides. You're gonna to wanna to put one on the hot side and one on the cold side. Uh, basically, it's just a safe space for them to go and relax and they can thermoregulate themselves and they don't have to choose between heat or safety. For example, like let's say they're a little colder and they wanna go sit on a heat mat. Uh, they don't wanna be exposed. So you're gonna to wanna to put one over that heat mat so they feel secure as well as they can go ahead and get that heat. Just again, making sure they don't have to choose between temperature and security. Speaking of temperature, you're gonna to wanna to have the hot side at about 90 degrees or so, 90 to 95 at the very max. Uh, and you're gonna to wanna to do that by doing an under tank heating pad connected to a thermostat, which is very, very important. You wanna make sure your heating pad is connected to a thermostat. That way it can shut off if it gets too hot. You can set the temperature you want it at and it just automatically shuts off whenever it reaches that temperature because if you don't have it connected to a thermostat, it can burn your snake. As far as ambient air, you're gonna wanna have it at about 80 to max 85 degrees. Um, so if your room is a little on the colder side where you're gonna be keeping them, you're gonna wanna put, also put a lamp on top to just kind of warm up the air a little more. Um, so again, I personally have an under tank heater and a little lamp on top, especially in the winter, um, just to kind of raise the temperature in there a bit, make sure they don't get too cold. When it comes to humidity, you're going to want to have the humidity at about 50 to 60%, which can be achieved by choosing a specific type of substrate, which I'll get into later, or misting down your tank once or twice a day. 
So you're going to want to have a little thermometer in there that measures the temperature as well as the humidity, just so you can keep an eye on those things and make sure they're within the, you know, recommended levels. Like I mentioned earlier um, about the substrate, so I personally use Repti chip, which are basically just coconut chips and they retain humidity really well. Um, there's a lot of different options you can use to just kind of line the bottom of the tank. Whenever you get a new snake, a lot of people recommend doing paper towels just so you can monitor their waste, the color, the consistency, how often they're going. And it's easy to clean. You can just take away the used paper towels and just replace them. A lot of people might do newspaper. That's a little cheaper. Uh, you can go that route if you'd like. You can use Eco Earth. You can use uh, Cypress Mulch. Forest Floor is what I used to use. Um, and it's just retained the humidity really well. But yeah, like I said, since then I've switched to Repti Chip. I personally love it. Uh, it retains the humidity really well and I end up having to only spray down the tank maybe once at night and it holds over to the next day at about 50% or so, uh, especially with the water bowl. The water bowls in the tanks can help boost the humidity up a bit, so that's always important, plus it's fresh drinking water. But like I said, you have a lot of different options to choose from as far as substrate goes. So just kind of do your research and see what's better for you and what you prefer. When it comes to food, I personally do frozen thawed. I believe that's a better choice than doing live animals. I personally am just a little more sensitive when it comes to animals and I don't know. I had to feed Voodoo live rats when I first got him just because ball pythons can be a little finicky when it comes to eating. They're a little pickier and they can go off food for a while. He wasn't used to frozen thawed, so it took me about a month to switch him over. But that month of doing the live just was not fun for me. Um, I understand that's the food chain and all that. I just it's a personal choice um, as far as Safety goes it is safer to do frozen thawed rats just because live rats can harm your snake They can scratch them bite them and you want to just keep an eye on them make sure you know that doesn't happen So that's always kind of a risk when you're feeding live rats You're gonna to want to feed your juvenile ball python, which is about a year and under once maybe every five to seven days Whereas once they reach about over a year, you can switch over to about seven to, you know, at max 12 days. But you can kind of spread out the uh, time in between a little longer when they're older. Uh, and you're going to want to feed appropriately sized rats or mice. You want to make sure they're no bigger than like the thickest part of their body. I mean, if it's a little bigger, you'll be fine. Um, in the wild, they don't really get to choose you know, a perfect size or anything like that. It's just the recommended. You want to make sure it's not too big for them or too small. If you go a little smaller, you can always do two of them. Like I said, ball pythons can be finicky eaters and they can go off of food for quite a bit. Um, the number one thing I want to say that maybe causes them to go off food is not meeting their husbandry requirements. So if they're not eating, you want to make sure the temperature is at the right range, the humidity at the right range. Um, the second thing is illness. If your snake is rapidly losing weight, you're going to want to make sure to take it to a vet and make sure it's okay and everything is all right. Um, so, I mean, if the husbandry all seems correct and they're not eating and they're rapidly losing weight, you're going to want to get them checked out with a veterinarian. And the third thing is when you first get your snake, you're going to want to give it a minimum of two weeks by itself. Uh, no handling, just kind of letting it get familiar with its new um, environment, new surroundings. All reptiles can get stressed pretty easily, causing them to go off food. And like I mentioned, ball pythons are particularly sensitive. I know you're going to be excited when you first get your new snake to handle it, but you're going to want to make sure it takes food from you at least two times. Eating is a good sign that they're getting pretty comfortable um, with their new surroundings. So again, you want to make sure you have at least two successful feedings before you go and handle your new snake. And it's also important not to handle them at least 24 hours, recommended 48 hours after eating because they can't regurgitate their food. I'm going to be showing you how to set up a ball python enclosure. I do have a video of me setting up Voodoo's enclosure and just kind of showing you everything that should go in there. But yeah, enjoy it and cue the setup video.
right, thank you guys for watching. That is the end of my ball python care video. Um, I hope this helped you, whether you're thinking about getting a snake, you just got a brand new snake, or you just kind of needed a refresher. I hope I was able to answer all your questions. Again, if there's anything I missed, feel free to message me at Reptilian Forest. I'd be happy to help you out and answer any questions. I'll definitely be doing a lot more videos about care uh, for my Brazilian rainbow boa, my king snake, and a whole bunch of other fun videos. So make sure you like and subscribe. And again, thank you guys for watching.